Hey everybody, Tyler here with Boost Junkie Media and today we are standing in front of my 2020 Mustang GT and we're going to do a video talking a little bit more about the ESS Supercharger kit that I put on the car. Um, I've had the kit now on the car for several weeks and I'm going to kind of give you some thoughts on some things and some things that I, I still think could be done better and a small thing that I had done that I didn't really end up liking and I think maybe was causing maybe some weirdness um, so I'm going to address that as well as I did get it to the track and I'm going to go over some uh, ET and mile an hour times with you a little bit on the car as it sits right now uh, keep in mind this is not a max effort all you know all out build this is a I can go to any pump put 93 gas in it uh, drive it across country you know have fun in it street car that I don't have to worry about anything breaking but when I still want to go to the track or want to go a little bit quick in it and have some fun, it's going to do that, no problem. So that's the intent of this car. So while the times are not blistering for what it is, I think they're pretty good and I'm actually very happy with them. Um, so let me go ahead and let's just jump right into it and I'm going to grab the camera here. And so first thing we're going to address on the kit is the... Um, so. Depending on what your car you have, when you get the kit, it's going to come with some different things. On the 18 plus cars, the Gen 3s, they have you disconnect this line here, which used to go to the stock air box. There was a fitting here on the outside elbow of the air box that this hose went to, and there was a white uh, quick connect fitting on this hose. In the instructions, they have you cut that off. Um, I originally did not really want to do that. I, my intent was to try to be able to put this back to stock as easily as possible. So what I had done um, is we had taken a this this white fitting right here. This is just a universal vacuum with connections on both sides here. We had taken this and ground this one side down here a little bit so that the quick connect clip would grab onto this and click it in just like the factory connector did. What I forgot to look at or forgot to check was to make sure that the actual vacuum piece here was sealing into that uh, connector. And after some messing around with it, I, I don't know that it fully was. I think there may have been just a very, very, very minor vacuum leak right there at that joint. Um, you could kind of feel it if you pushed in or out on the connection, you could feel it move. And you could feel the vacuum here in this hose uh, change a little bit as you pushed it in and out. So what that tells me is there was a minor vacuum leak there, which isn't a super big deal. But vacuum leaks will cause some, uh, you know, idle irregularities and possibly some fueling irregularities. Mostly when cruising around and idle, I don't think it's a, it never showed any signs of any issues at wide open throttle, which is the important part. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to address that today. Um, one of my issues I have with this setup here is this universal, this hose here coming from up here is much larger than this. And so what you're about to see, let's see if I can hold the camera here to show you guys this. So as you see right there, you can see how easy. Now, yes, I don't have a zip tie on here because I cut it off. I did have one. But even without the zip tie, this should be tighter. If I just put a little bit of pressure on that, that comes right apart. And the issue is, is this area right here on this fitting is only 3 8 This hose is bigger than 3 8 This is like a 5 16 inch hose. So this fitting is a little bit too small for this side. Now for this one down here, this hose is fine. It, it, this, is, this hose is 3 8 This goes right up over the 3 8 area. You know, I've got no zip tie on there and I can guarantee you that's going to be a pain to get off right there. So my fix action that I'm going to do for all of this. Let me give me a second here to get this open. I should have done this already. Put you guys back in the cradle here. So this is an ICT billet. I got this on Amazon. This is a 3 8 I don't know if you can see it. It's a 5, 5 16 metal vacuum fitting. It's got your barbs on both ends. One side is 5 16 one side is 3 8 So we're going to use this. This was like $7 on Amazon, um, which, yeah, maybe $7 for one fitting is a little expensive, but it, I mean, it is what it is. 
you don't get into this hobby because you know because <laughs> it's not expensive it is an expensive hobby um so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fight this other fitting this other side here get this hose off of here and then we're going to put this in so we're going to put this in the smaller end into the smaller hose and we're going to put the bigger barbed in into the bigger end we're going to see how tight that is we're also zip tie it uh, i always like to zip tie but we'll see how we're going to give that a pull just like i did a minute ago and i think you'll see that that's going to be a much tighter connection so uh, i'm just going to do this off camera a little bit because i know that this other fitting is going to fight me slightly uh it did last time i took it apart so let me uh do this real quick and then i'll be back once we're once we get that art okay we're back and this is the universal fitting that comes in the kit um so as you can see this is what i was talking about these two ends right here these two sections are the same size these are both three eighths right here that is the issue with this particular connector so what we're going to do so i'm going to grab you guys again we're going to come in here and hopefully you guys can see and this is my ict billet three eighths to five sixteenths and we're going to see if we can't you know what maybe i'll put you guys back on the tripod here I'll just try to get you aimed down there at it all right i think that's got it okay so hopefully you can see now okay so here's our bigger hose there's our barb there's the bigger side so we're gonna go ahead and slide that up in there like that. Oh yeah, and I can already tell that is a much better connection. And then we're gonna take this end here and it's gonna slide down over the small side there. <sighs> yeah, and that is already, I can tell, a much better connection. There we go. Okay. So now I'll grab you guys just to get you a little closer. And so now you can see that if I pull on this, like none of this is coming apart. This is even without zip ties. This is this is in there. Then honestly, if you ask me, that looks much nicer than the silver um or than this white connector that was in there. So that part can be got from Amazon for seven bucks. I highly recommend it. I think that's a much better setup. May have to pull some of this slack through on this a little bit just so that's not quite so tight. But you kind of get the idea there. So that is that. I will finish that up off camera. And to finish it up, all I'll do is just put a zip tie on it. Let's get you guys back over here where you can see me. Not that that's a treat or anything. But I do want to talk a little bit about the times. Okay, we'll leave these here for right now. So let me grab my slip and I will put this up on the screen. Just so that I don't have it memorized, just so I have the numbers. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the, um, the time that the car ran. So. Keep in mind, this was with that connection slightly possibly being leaky. So there's a chance that there was a small boost leak there, but I don't know because I'm already seeing a little bit more boost than what the kit says. So I don't know that it's exactly a boost leak. It could be very minor. It's probably not enough to really affect anything though. So just keep that in mind. So here's my slip. This was from Friday night, uh, 8th of April. Uh, my buddy, Josh, you guys, I mentioned several times, Underground Garage. Um, he lives down in North Carolina and Fayetteville Motorsports Park down there has just reopened uh, not too long ago. And it's the surface is probably the best it's ever been. There used to be, you know, uh, Josh likes to say a, a, a two step, two jump step up or whatever on the left side and the right side had the groove that liked to drive you towards the wall. All that stuff seems to be corrected. Uh, I went down in the left lane. I only made one pass. I went down in the left lane everything seemed to be good to go. Um, I did not make a pass in the right lane, but a couple of guys I was there with did, they didn't seem to say anything about it. So 
The track was in pretty good shape. Um, I didn't have any traction issues. I didn't really see anybody having any major traction issues. So the, the prep seems to be better than it's ever been as well. So keep in mind, streetcar, you know, 93 pump gas. Uh, the tune is not on kill. You know, Rob, Rob tuned it. It's safe. I did put some Octane Booster in just as a secondary precaution. The Gen 3s, you know, if they detonate at all, bye-bye Ringlands, especially under boost. Um, so I just didn't want to have any issues with that. So I put, I did put a thing of Octanium, Octane Booster in it just for double protection. And so on the 120 millimeter pulley, now this pulley is the, the 125, I think is the biggest that ESS offers. 120 is one step down. Their rating is 7.5 PSI at like 7,200 RPMs. Uh, the car is revving out a little bit more than that. I think, I think it's like 7,500 is where it's doing the shifts. So a little bit more RPM with a centrifugal is going to give you a little more boost. So I have seen on the P3 boost gauge inside, keep in mind I don't have a way to data log it. It's just looking at it with my, with my eyes. I've seen as high as like 8.6, 8.7 pounds of boost. The 120 millimeter pulley is supposed to be 7.5. So I'm seeing maybe a pound more than what the kit, what the pulley that I have is rated for. And that, like I said, it's probably the higher RPM that's doing it. So just keep that in mind if you're gonna get one of these kits and you're specking out a pulley, that those ratings are rated at like 7,200. If you're gonna rev it out a little higher, which you can in these cars, is not a big deal. Um, just keep that in mind that you know you you need to pulley appropriately. So on the 120 millimeter pulley, um, I did put the axles in it. You guys saw the video on that. Uh, 93, you know, Rob's tuning it safe. Um, it did go. It went 10.58 at 134.97. Uh, the 60 foot was only 1.73, so not a stellar 60 foot which is what equates to the 10.5. Um, the ET, you know, could be a little better. If you can get that 60 foot down, if you can even cut a tenth off of that, you know, that's gonna be a, a 10.30 something uh, pretty, pretty easily, a high 10.30 something. So that is the, I only did make one pass in the car too. I didn't get more than one. Um, so there's, there's a little bit of a learning curve, even with it being automatic, you have to kind of figure out where the car likes to stall to. I don't have a torque converter. I didn't use the trans brake function or anything. This is just foot braking it, stalling it up, and then stabbing it. Um, I think I was a little lower than my target because I, I didn't want to sit there for too, too long. Uh, I think I left maybe at like 17, 1800 RPM. I can look back at the data log and see. Uh, and that's why I only went 173. So, but what I am pretty happy with is the 134.97. That's basically 135 miles an hour. So this kit, you know, is, $5,500 and it will, you know, make a 4,000 pound plus car go down the track in a quarter mile at 135 miles an hour. That's, that's not slow. That's, that's actually very quick. Keep in mind when it was stock, I took it on a drag radial with the same drag radial it's on now. And I think it went one, like 118, you know, 119, something like that on a, on its best day. You know, I think there was 116, 117 passes in there. So if you take, you know, 117 and it's now going 135, what is that? That's, I mean, that's quite a bit. That's quite a bit of mile an hour. And literally all I did was bolt on the supercharger and, and put a tune on it. So if you think of it like that, that's actually pretty, pretty impressive to me um, that you can do such a minor, you know, minor mod really in the grand scheme of things, uh, several hours in a garage or whatever with some friends and you, you can do the same thing. You know, I, I don't know what power it's making. I haven't got a chance to put it on the dyno yet. Hopefully that is coming. But at the end of the day, to me, a dyno is just a tool. Uh, dyno numbers really don't mean anything. You know, automatics are gonna dyno lower, manuals are gonna dyno higher. But generally, as far as ET, if the track goes, an automatic is gonna destroy a manual. So that, that tells you right there, the dyno isn't, the it doesn't tell you anything. All it does is give you a comparison from one to another, whether it be a previous tune to a, you know, a new tune or a, a previous build to a new build, or you change something else and you want to see the difference. If you use the same dyno under same conditions, under same everything as much as possible, it will give you a comparison. That's what the tool is used for. Um, track numbers really are the, the true tail of you know of the car and what it can do 
So like I said, I, I'm pretty happy with the car. 135 is, is not slow. And that is on the 120 millimeter pulley. I do have a 110 millimeter pulley um, that I do plan to go back to the track at some point. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the other video yet. I don't know if I released it, but I mentioned it in a previous video. There's a track day, a track rental, I should say, coming up in May uh, at Maryland International Raceway that I am a part of. My intent is to take the Fox body but if something happens with that, or if I decide to not take the Fox body, I could end up taking this. If I do that, we'll put the 110 millimeter pulley on it and a smaller belt. And we'll definitely put some Octane Booster in for that and we'll see, we'll see what it does. Um, so yeah, so pretty much it. I didn't really go over the other times. ET was a 694 at 106, a thousand foot. No one really cares about that except the NHRA, you know, top fuel uh, guys. So. Um, six second, eighth mile, street car, 10 second, 10, five second, uh, you know, street car, 193 pump gas, uh, all your luxury, you know, air conditioning, heated, cooled seats, all, all the good stuff. And it's still a 10, five street car, which is pretty impressive. Um, and I think with a little bit of work with the shocks and stuff, I think it would go down, you know, I think it'll go down the street. I think it'll go down just about any surface without too much trouble, uh, which is nice. So that's that's the ET thing, and then one more thing I did want to kind of address is I had some questions and I totally forgot until just now, but we are going to address this. I had some more questions about the um, gauge hookup, the P3 gauge. So I do have a P3 boost gauge that actually uses a boost reference line from the motor that goes into the controller for the gauge, and then it displays a boost number. So it's not an inferred boost based on load and math, you know, uh, math pound per minute of air measurement. It's an actual boost gauge. And so what, what I did to do that is this same boost line here, the same line that we talked about earlier comes off of here. This rubber line comes down and necks up underneath here. Let me see if I can get a light. Should have had this ready. So that line runs underneath this coolant line here runs up under there and hopefully right there you can see there's a T connector there's a T fitting so this branch of the T right here is the line coming from the the intake um, the one that's down there goes down to the boot blow off valve for the ESS kit and then this line that's right here that I'm touching with my light it actually runs over here it runs up on top of the headlight there and across the top of the headlight and it comes up right here and it's zip tied, it's this little line right here and it's zip tied to your cape, my hood release cable. And so it runs all the way up here. It runs up behind the ABS block, it runs down behind the ABS block, behind the booster, goes down behind the booster and goes into that hole down there in the firewall. That is where the sound tube used to be. I think I can put this down now and put you guys back on the tripod. Um, so yeah, so it goes through that hole where the sound tube used to be that goes into the cabin inside the cabin is where I've got the P3 gauge controller. There's a little, little block, a little module that I've got zip tied up under the dash off to the side. And that there's a rubber line in there that comes off of that hard line that runs to that. There's a little, little nipple, little fitting on that controller and that line runs onto there. And then I've got that all zip tied. So that is the boost reference for the gauge. So that is giving boost or vacuum, depending on you know where you're at in the, uh, as far as the throttle. If you're, in the, if you're in the throttle, you're gonna see boost. If you're not in the throttle, you're, you're gonna see vacuum. Uh, it does show you both. So that is the reference line for that gauge. So as I said, true boost gauge, not an inferred boost amount based on load and math signal and stuff like that. Uh, which I really like the the previous car, the orange car. I never had that. It was just the performance pack gauges from the EcoBoost, and the cars don't have a. They have a one bar map sensor, so they can't actually measure boost. They can only measure atmospheric zero. And so, if you ever look at your data log, you're going to see your your map signal, your map uh, go to 99.9 .9 or 100, maybe. That's atmosphere, basically. Uh, it won't show anything more than that. So that's why it's nice to be able to see the actual boost numbers. 
Um, with that being said, guys, I think that's kind of all I wanted to address. We did, I showed you the new fitting, which is awesome. I'm really glad that worked. I also talked about the ET and performance of the car and then showed you the boost line thing. I know there were some questions about that. I think that's all there really is. Uh, so with that being said, guys, please give me a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That would be greatly appreciated. If you have any friends that, you know, like Mustangs, especially the newer stuff or the Fox body stuff, you know, let them know about the channel. Um, see if they, you know, are interested. They can come subscribe. Give me some likes. Give me some comments. I, I love, you know, interfacing with people. Um, even if it's a, you know, a discussion or a critique on something, that's, that's fine too. I'm, I'm open to, you know, some, uh, criticism. Hopefully it's in a constructive manner and not, you know, just demeaning, but some criticism, I'm always open to that and a good discussion. So that being said, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Keep it boosted.